Okay, Ms. Jones loves to be prompt, so Ms. Technician, if you want to go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, you're, go ahead and do your thing. Okay, so tonight, you all, I um, thought we would start, I'm sure everybody on Zoom land out there knows this, but today we lost a very significant member of our community. Dr. Um, Carolyn Barnhart passed away this morning after her long fight with um, leukemia. And for all of us, I know each one of us, we shared our stories when we were meeting a couple of weeks ago. She's been a mentor and she's our most recent recipient of the Florence Ball Goddard. So it's just a really, really tough time. And um, I thought it would be appropriate if we just had a moment of silence. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're here for a really happy purpose. Well, we all consider it happy. I'm not so sure Melissa. <laughs> I do. Well, part of it. <laughs> completely celebrate with us. But tonight we are going to have our first virtual um, national honorary initiation. And we felt like we were compelled to do this because we had such a special person that's been with our national office now for five years. And Melissa will say she's kept her, you know, in line the whole time. Absolutely. Um, looks like you've got another one yet to admit, Debbie. Thanks. And so I am going to have the privilege of introducing uh, Miss Dottie Salter to you all. And then we will have the actual initiation ceremony. And for those of you in Zoom world, at, at the very end, after Dottie signs the book, we're going to post on the screen the creed. And if you all want to recite it with us, we would encourage you to to join us and see if I can see through my fogged up glasses here. All right, so Dottie um, attended Coastal Alabama Community College. It was formerly known as Jefferson Davis Community College in Bruton, Alabama, and she interned in the Dean's office. So she's already been in the academic world. She went on to have a long and full career, which began in 1974 as a materials buyer for Vanity Fair in Monroeville, Monroeville Alabama. When Vanity Fair did their biggest program, and I'm going to take off this, mm. their biggest program with Victoria's Secret, Dottie was in charge of all the fabrics and responsibilities, including management development, timelines, coordinating material dyeing, and when the development of bras changed into molded bus cups, she helped with this transition <laughs> too. Uh, she became a purchasing agent for materials when the company relocated to Alfreda, Georgia in 1997. And after 9-11, Dottie was promoted to customs compliance manager and was selected for her background in materials. And this position was imperative to ensuring Vanity Fair was in compliance with the new Homeland Security regulations. Dottie and her husband, Shelton, moved to Bowling Green, Kentucky in 2009 when Fruit of the Loom acquired Vanity Fair. And if you all don't know it out there in Zoom land, we are the national headquarters of Fruit of the Loom and Vanity Fair here in Little Oak Bowling Green. So after 37 years, Dottie retired from that company and she still enjoyed doing some custom sewing baby gowns for a, a small local company we have here called Posh Pushers. And then Melissa, having met her at Fruit of the Loom, which was Melissa's former career, she twisted her arm and got her to join the National FIU office in 2015 as the executive assistant. And I'm sure Melissa's gonna add some statements later about just how instrumental she has been in the successful moving of that office from West Virginia in all its glory and now to Bowling Green, Kentucky into an office and she has um, credited Dottie with being instrumental in organizing materials and information, developing procedure manuals and assisting with all the evolving office systems that FIU, FIU is constantly striving to update. And those of us on National Council know we're going to try to do another big one this time without Dottie's help. <laughs> so FIU wants to extend our utmost appreciation and honor for her service. We would like to welcome her into our fold tonight by initiating her as a National Honorary Member. So ladies, I think we can begin. As we meet together today for the important occasion of initiating new members of Phi Epsilon Omicron, we seek to improve and develop ourselves. Our honor society, our profession, and in the larger community in accordance with the ideals of Phi Epsilon Omicron. The honor society of which you are about to become a member promotes the fulfillment of these goals. One, to recognize and promote academic excellence. 
two, to enhance qualities of leadership by providing opportunities for service, three, to encourage lifelong learning and commitment to advance family and consumer sciences in related areas. The degree to which we as an honor society attain our goals depends on the sincerity of each member and the willingness of that member to bring to the work an openness of mind, a responsible attitude, and an ability to perceive the best in things and people. Realizing the strength and influence of true friendship, we believe that our purposes can be attained through working together. Phi Epsilon Omicron's foundation is fourfold, academic excellence, leadership, service, and integrity. In receiving you into Phi Epsilon Omicron, we pledge you our friendship and loyalty. We ask of you in return your friendship and loyalty. Dear members of Phi Epsilon Omicron, we have come together to receive this person into our honor society. We have honored them in our invitation to membership, and they have honored us with their acceptance. In becoming a member of an honor society, one accepts his goals and ideas as its own. In striving to attain these goals, close ties of friendship are formed, a sense of responsibility is deepened, and one's influence is broadened. Is broadened. As people give themselves and their abilities and their accomplishments, their satisfactions are increased. Like the light of a candle, the light produced by their lives has affected the world about them. Miss Melissa, please read. As you journey through life, choose your destinations well, but do not hurry there. You will arrive soon enough. Wander the back roads and forgotten paths, keeping your destination in your heart. Like the fixed point of a compass, seek out new voices, strange sights, and ideas foreign to your own. Such things are riches for the soul. And if upon arrival, you find that your destination is not exactly as you had dreamed. Do not be disappointed. Think of all you would have missed, but for the journey there. And know that the true worth of your travels lies not in where you come to be a journey's end, but in who you come to be along the way. Beautiful. Never to tire, never to grow cold, to be patient, sympathetic, and tender, to look for the budding flower and the opening heart, to hope always, to love always. This is duty, the noblest task in the school of life. Phi Epsilon Omicron is only as strong as each individual member. Therefore, each of us must realize and fulfill the responsibilities of membership. We work to be of service to each other and to all of those whom we come in contact. We, bond, we hope the bonds of fellowship begin here or even stronger and dearer to us and include those who are a part of our chapter circle and who are not with us today. As you strive to keep our standards high and to obtain the goals and ideals we have set, set for our lives, we wish to be worthy members of this group who are kind, thoughtful, sensitive, and willing to serve. Will the initiate repeat this pledge after me? I, Dottie Salter. I, Dottie Salter. Promise to be loyal to Phi Epsilon Omicron. Promise to be loyal to Phi Epsilon Omicron. To promote the aims of the Honor Society. To promote the aims of the Honor Society. And to reach for the highest ideals. And to reach for the highest ideals. In my personal and professional life. In my personal and professional life. The name of our Honor Society, Phi Epsilon Omicron, consists of the initial letters of the first, second, and last words of the Greek phrase, Phase Poten Ikion, which translates to mean the light of the home. Keep in mind the meaning of these words. Let those around you know their meaning by the life you live as a member of Phi Epsilon Omicron. This is our pin, our most precious symbol. It's yours to wear as long as you do so in honor for Phi Epsilon Omicron. is the outward expression of our goals, ideals, and visions. The ring on the pin symboli symbolizes the family circle. The candle with the diamond stands for the light, the light of the home. Our, our flower is the violet. May it always remind you of the virtues for which it stands, faithfulness and truth. Our colors are yellow, white, pur and purple. Yellow symbolizing light, white representing honor, integrity, and purple rep representing faithfulness. In using these symbols, we strive to keep our goals and ideals before us and make our influence felt by those around us. I have the privilege of presenting this lighted candle to you. Accepting this candle signifies your belief in the goals and ideals of Phi Epsilon Omicron. Will you affirm your acceptance by saying, I will? I will. 
Dottie Salter, will you accept this candle on behalf of all of the initiates and place it on the table to help us complete the circle of light and sign our membership roll? So those of you out in Zoom world, if you would like to join us, we'll all say the creed in, in unison. To the members of Phi Epsilon Omicron, the trust is given, be condemned within our lives, circles of life. It is our privilege to carry forth this life of friendship and service, shine in countless human lives around. In so doing, Thank you all. And at this point, we are going to listen and be motivated and inspired by the Phi New Song, which is available to everyone on Phi New website. Congratulations, Mr. Salter. Thank you. Welcome to FIU. So it is my pleasure and National Executive Director of Phi Upsilon Omicron to present you with your official membership certificate into the Honor Society. Thank you. <laughs> Beta Delta chapter at Western Kentucky University and the students that were here tonight with us and um, conducted the initiation ceremony, we'd like to present you with this print of the violets and appreciation for everything you've done for Five U and for Melissa. And this particular watercolor was commissioned as a fundraiser for our chapter many years ago by a local artist named Sandra Scott. Oh, Oh, good. And now, if you would like to say a couple of words, Dottie, if you'll just look toward the Zoom camera, I guess that's the best we can do. Well, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Cindy and Debbie and these lovely young ladies for this recognition ceremony. Thank you. Thank you to um, the Bayou National Council and the Education Foundation Board for honoring me as being the national. Um, honorary member in for 2020. Thank you to Melissa Martin for giving me the opportunity to work in the national office. I'm really going to miss it. I'm going to miss by you, and I wish you all the very best. We might make it all the way through without tears. Anybody, <laughs> um, anybody out there in Zoom land that wants to say anything, you're welcome to. Lynette, if I didn't know you were going to be on there, I would ask you to sing the song. But I just I just didn't know that. We at least got to hear it. But thank each of you for taking a few moments out to join us for this very prestigious 
um, ceremony that we had to do in a very 2020 way. <laughs> okay. I would just like to say to Dottie, this is Susan Miller, and Dottie, I just met you virtually in 2016, and you helped so much with our uh, conclave that we held here in Oklahoma City, and I appreciate that so very much. Melissa, I know is really going to miss you, and just thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Dottie. It's nice to see you in person. This is Jennifer Reeder. Um, and we hear so many great things about you from Melissa. And we're sad for all of us and especially for her to see you go, but we're excited for you to have some new adventures. So thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. I'm Congratulations. Gonna I'm gonna miss all of you. Kyle's <laughs> got the thumbs up. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll invite her to conclave in Columbus in 2022, so she'll be a, at least be able to come see one. Thank you all again. So if all minds are at ease. Uh, I, would, I just have a few things. Oh, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> say a few words. Okay. Um, I don't know. Come on. Yeah. 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 Get up here so they can see. I just wanted to share a few words. I won't get too emotional because I'm not a pretty crier. Um, <laughs> but... As, as Cindy Jones stated, um, Ms. Salter is being recognized for her years of service as executive assistant for the Honor Society and her long and successful career in the textiles and apparel industry. She has been instrumental in the success of the FIU National Office following the move from West Virginia to Kentucky. Mr. Salter's vast skill set, her aptitude for establishing procedure processes an impeccable organization have been vital to Phi Upsilon Omicron. She exemplifies Phi's ideals and purposes, and although she has assisted me in my role as the National Executive Director, she is a leader in her own right. Mrs. Salter sets the bar high in every project she tackles and is a true testament to heart-centered leadership. Thank you, Dr. Are all minds at ease? <laughs> Sorry, I almost forgot the most important speaker there. <laughs> all right, so thank you everyone for joining us this evening, and uh, we look forward to the next time we're together. And thank you, Miss Debbie Shibble. Y'all haven't seen her, but she's over here being our technical director. Jennifer, she's got your role tonight, so she's she's managing the share screens. <laughs> thank you, Debbie. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you.